Me, I'm the statistician for the Roslyn Institute and if you have any statistical problems you can always come and talk to me about them. In particular I'm always pleased to see people when they're designing their experiments. Um, just to put it into context, some of you have probably seen this slide before, in terms of gaining statistical skills there's a lot of aspects that um, you need to become familiar with and rather than go through them all, some of them basic statistical techniques I've covered in other sessions, but experimental design is a key skill too and that comes hopefully at the start of your, your study where you consider some of the aspects that are important. So in this session I'm just going to look at some of the things that you should think about, some of the aspects that um, you, you might take into account when um, setting up an experiment. Why is it important? Well, you want to maximise the amount of information when you come to do your analysis that you can obtain about your research question, which we might call a hypothesis. If you do what might be considered a poorly designed study, this might lead to wasting effort, so you might waste money, and more importantly, you might waste animals, and this is a big consideration at the moment. And we've got an ethics committee in Roslyn, and we're becoming more sort of interested in whether that first of all the study is using enough animals and also that it's not using too many animals. So you might have wasted animals if the study doesn't have enough animals and you don't reach the result that you might have done then that's really wasting them or you might have too many animals and you didn't you know you get the result you wanted but you didn't really need that many animals. Results might not be as interesting as you might have thought so it is worth paying attention to. The way I like to sort of think about the design process is, I mean, it goes through stages, of course, first of all, you've got to decide what your study aim is. A simple aim might be, if you're studying humans, uh, who's the tallest, the males or females. So that, that's quite clear, but um, I think going ahead to thinking about where you want to be at the end of your study is quite helpful. You're writing your publication, you want to be able to say what's happened and you think about how you want to do that. Most types of study then one thing you want to be able to say is the result is statistically significant. Usually, one thing you want to be able to say is, uh, and in this example, males are statistically significantly, hopefully taller than females. Um, so you want to be able to get to that stage. So I'll look at a few factors you need to consider to, to get there. But also there's other things, and it's not just statistical significance. You want to be able to generalise your result. People might say, well, you got it in that study, but might I get it in another study carried out in a different country or something? A male's always taller than females. You've only looked at the population in the UK. What about if you went to Australia or, or something? Would they still be taller? So you, it's things to think about. You want to be able to ideally generalise as far as possible. So there's things to think about there. There's also sometimes in a fully designed study or even in a study that you can't design particularly well, there might be biases that might invalidate your result. For example, if the, the males had had a better diet than the females when they were growing up, that might be a reason for them being taller and you couldn't just conclude that males are inherently taller than females. And it's quite often you can build that into your study um, design, sort of try and eliminate some of the sources of bias. <laughs> 